So right now I am in Budva, which is the biggest tourist attraction in Montenegro. And in this video, I'm gonna cover my first impressions of this place and my experience of getting to Montenegro. Okay, so it's around 3.30 p.m. and I just arrived in Montenegro from Belgrade and I'm in the capital city of Podgorica and this is my first time here and I just got off the plane and got myself a sim card for 30 days it's 4G but it was like 500 gigabytes for 15 euros which is like a ridiculous deal by the way guys if you missed my last video about uh, getting an eSIM you can always do that and save yourself the trouble of uh, having to find a sim card when you get to a new place this trip was so rushed I didn't have a chance to like figure out the eSIM or do anything before I caught my flight so I just came over here and I uh, got the first sim I saw at the airport right now I'm heading to the train station by the airport and then I'm planning on taking a train to the center of Podgorica and then hopefully a bus to the coastal city of Budva it's not too hot but hot enough to get me sweating So I somehow managed to get on the wrong train going the wrong direction so I got off as fast as I could and I'm waiting for the next train going to the right way which is that way. Second attempt, hopefully I'll get to Padgurica this time. And I'm in these fancy cabins, hopefully I have money to pay it because I only have like I think 20 or 10 euros in right now. So I took the train to Pakurica and no one asked me to pay. I thought I was gonna pay inside. I guess this is like the buses in Belgrade. Okay, so I am at the main bus station of Podgorica, which is very conveniently located right next to the train station, which is basically uh, on the other side. And I got a bus ticket going to Budva in 45 minutes. There was an earlier train, but I need a little bit of time to uh, catch up on eating some Balkan food. Now we're done. Mala place have it. Urnavis. Krastavats. Hola. Hola, please. My least favorite thing about Euros is that you have to use a lot of coins. Looks like it's going to rain soon. So I got a uh, Pleska Vica, which is not the Pleska Vica I'm used to in Serbia. I guess they just gave me a random burger that was already cooked, which is kind of strange because the whole point of a place of pizza is that they're supposed to cook it in front of you. So it's 7.15 p.m. and I just got out of the bus station and I'm finally in the town of Budva, which looks like a lot of the other Mediterranean cities or towns that I've been to. And when I was coming here from the bus, I saw some jaw-dropping views of the city. It's probably too late today to drop off my stuff and take out my drone and camera and film the coastline, but some good shots are coming tomorrow for sure. This is really pretty, really fancy too. Oh, hello. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, good morning. I am inside the old town of Budva. And yesterday I came and stayed at this hostel, which is, has a good location, but there's not much else that's really cool about it. Today I'm gonna go explore the old town. I basically just walked into this really cool beach in the middle of Old Town, which is kind of weird. Usually Old Towns are fortified, not with beaches. So unlike Kotor, the Old Town of Budva is like actually pretty tiny. You can go from one end to the other or just walk around it in like five minutes. And when you walk outside the walls, 
You see the ruins of a Roman Acropolis from I think like 2200 or 2100 years ago, which says a lot about how old this place has been or how long this place has been a settlement for. Sabudba is 2500 years old and is one of the most ancient settlements on the Adriatic coast. And a lot like Kotor, this place was ruled by many different empires over the last couple of thousand years. First by the Greeks, then by the Romans, then by the Byzantines, then at one point by the Venetians, then by the Austro-Hungarian Empire if I remember right. I think even uh, Napoleon's France was ruling this place for a couple of years. Then eventually along with the rest of Montenegro, this came under the Yugoslavian kingdoms or states for most of the 20th century or all the 20th century. And then finally in 2006, when Montenegro gained independence from Serbia, Budva basically became the premium tourist place in all of Montenegro. So right outside the town, if you walk along one of the most famous beaches, you come across the statue of a ballerina, which a lot of people come and like to take pictures with for some reason, I don't know why. But right there, you can see this really cool island right off the coast of Budva with the beach, but you need to take a boat to go there, so I don't think I'll have time today. So just like Kotor, you've seen the last video, this coastal town of Budva is also right next to the mountains. But the cool thing I think here is like the mountains are not right against the town itself, but like a little bit far away. So you get some pretty nice views of the mountains in the distance. inside the old town again and this one's just as confusing as any other Mediterranean old town that I've been to but I found this place with a lot of cute little cats and uh, they ignored me like all other cats do but anyways um, I just went to an ATM and took out money so I took out like 90 euros which is a lot of money for most places in the Balkans but you have to remember this is a tourist resort town where most of the tourists are very wealthy people from like Russia, Ukraine, Turkey so they're not exactly, exactly um, catering usually for broke backpackers like me. So I had to do laundry and that cost eight euros and everything else costs a lot of money too. And a lot of places don't even take cards so you have to take out cash. And I had to pay five euros as a fee for taking out 90 euros of cash. Not happy, but that's how it is when you come to places like that. By the way, if you're a Bangladeshi living abroad and trying to go through a lot of hassles, trying to send money back home, you should really check out this app called TapTapSend. TapTapSend is a very simple app that allows you to send money very easily from the US, UK, Canada, or Europe with euros straight to Bangladesh without a lot of effort. There's a lot of lot of really good reasons to be using TapTapSend. First of all, there's like zero transaction fees, so you don't have to pay an extra fee or any kind of fee to send your money back home. Number two, the exchange rates are very great compared to the competitors. Number three, the transaction times are also very fast compared to competitors. Number four, and this is a unique selling point, if you're sending money to Bangladesh, you can send the money directly to a bank account or a Bcash account. And number five, I've been talking to TapTapSen and they've offered like a special promo code for my viewers, which is OTG. And if you use that on your first ever transaction, you get a 10 credit bonus on that. So if you're sending dollars from the US, you get a $10 bonus. If you're sending euros from Europe, you get a 10 euro bonus. For Canada, you get 10 Canadian dollar bonus. For UK, you get 10 pounds bonus. So make sure you use that code if you end up using the app. And make sure you check out the app if you do need to send money back home. So in the middle of Old Town of Budva is this really pretty square and the highlight of the square is definitely this uh, Church of Santa Maria which is I think more than a thousand years old and looks like they've turned it into a restaurant. So now I'm gonna go check out the Citadel Fortress and the walls of the old city of Budva. I'm 
finally on the walls of Budva. I didn't go inside the citadel because it like cost money to get in there and it didn't seem like that special. And these walls seem pretty cool. These are basically like 20 feet high walls that uh, separate the city and defended the city from outsiders back in the day, I guess. You can walk around this place. But thankfully this is not as expensive as Dubrovnik, you know, because over there it was like uh, 30 euros to get on the wall. I didn't even get on. Here it was only two euros, which is like not bad at all. Relatively, I'd say. So I want to get some coffee, but for that I want to go outside of Old Town, outside the walls, to this place that's supposed to be a lot cheaper, because I'm a cheap ass. Ice cream, healthy portions, iced coffee, I guess we'll put on it, and this cheese pastry, and all of it costs like less than three or four euros. Okay, we're gonna go cliff jumping right now at the spot. The Thomas just tested out, so <laughs> we're not gonna die, hopefully. And on the way here, my sandal is completely ripped, so. Walking with one sandal, hopefully no blisters are gonna come out of this. We got some new sandals, which should do the trick for now. For 10 euros, not too bad. Nice little beach here, I had no idea this is here. This is interesting. Mother fuck, give it a guy. Go for it. Shallow, that's the only thing. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Straight. Are you, you, you going to do it? Yeah, I will. Wow. Are you, you going to go? No. <laughs> Fuck, shall I go? Go for it. Okay, there's a small gap, but I think I can clear it. Fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay for both, man. Oh shit, I, I only have cash. <laughs> I got it. Thank you for coming with me. How much is it? I, I paid already. You did? Okay. Right. Voila. Thank you. Voila, Steve Rata. Oh yeah. Nazarabia. Top, bottom, table. Thanks. Nazarabia. Right, this is the post. Jump here to celebrate our lives. survival. Yeah. yeah, Thomas got a few cuts, but it's okay. You have one on your hand or something? Yeah, I like, like, you have one on your lip, right? Like, yeah, can I, I, I film it? Hold up. Yeah, you can. can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep, there's a cut there. Okay, yeah. so for the next stop today, we're going to this place that looks like one of the most stunning places on the whole Montenegrin coastline but it's not inside the city of Budva itself and it's 10 kilometers away so I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to get a bus to get there somewhere over there. So we have finally arrived at this place called Sweti Stefan. And this used to be an island back in the days, but then became an islet that is connected to the mainland today by this bridge, previously by just a channel of sand. So the earliest records of history state that this was the capital city of this region that was a protectorate of the Venetian Empire back in the 15th century. And then like a couple hundred years later, this was basically a village out here where 400 people lived. Then later on, basically, there were places on this island that served as the residence of uh, members of the Serbian royalty because you know Montenegro used to be a province of Serbia for the longest time ever. But afterwards in the 20th century this became a resort where huge names like uh, Marilyn Monroe used to come uh, on vacation and party I guess. Even in the 90s uh, this was run by this hotel and the only people that could come here were big names like David Beckham who were allowed to come on the beaches on both sides that you see here and take pictures. Normal people were not even allowed to come here, but recently the hotel, I think, has been closed and the beaches have been reclaimed by the people of Montenegro, the people of the Balkans. 
as they should be. Honestly, to me, it's interesting because this reminds me a lot of uh, Dubrovnik, but like a much smaller village version. Dubrovnik is like a huge city, uh, you know, from Game of Thrones. So unfortunately, you can't really go inside this village and explore further, but I think the best way to see this place is not from the inside, but from certain viewpoints on the outside over there and from the sky. So I literally could not have picked a better time to be done with the drone shots because it is starting to rain and I was in danger of losing my drone and I need to get out of here, find some shade. So on final note, I think I'm gonna end this video here and the next video is gonna be from the mountains of Montenegro if the weather allows. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more and follow me on Instagram for real-time travel updates. I'll catch you guys in the next video from somewhere else in Montenegro.